Welcome to the Mark Belton Podcast, powered by Roadrunner High Speed Online. In a fast-paced online world, who can afford to be held back by snail slow dial-up or DSL? You need email, streaming, file sharing, and downloads all lightning fast. You need the blazing speed of Roadrunner High Speed Online. Call 1-866 to enjoy RR or log on to www.timewarnercable.com. <laughs> News talk about the 30 WISN Mark Belling late afternoon show forecast. Fox 6 is Justin Zollich. Mostly cloudy tonight, low 20. Tomorrow, mix of sun and clouds, not as cold, 34. Thursday, mostly sunny, 40. We might get up to 44 uh, on Friday. Governor Walker is launching a television ad with the start of the new year to coincide with the one-year anniversary of his governorship. I'm going to play it for you here now. Understand, this is not a radio ad. It's a TV ad. You're going to hear the audio track of a television ad. So it's not not done in exactly the same way as if this would be a radio ad. There's a little bit more. It moves a little bit slower because you're seeing visuals throughout the ad. This ad is linked up for you on Belling.com for those of you who would like to view it. But so I can make a point here because I think that the strategy that that they're clearly showing by running this ad... Is revealing. So I want you to listen to this. It's a 60 second ad, and they're launching it on television today. And again, this is a TV ad, so you're missing a little bit of it because you're not seeing the visuals and the stuff behind the governor as he speaks uh, and so on. But I-, I think you'll get at least the, uh, the gist of what he's trying to communicate here. Hi, I'm Scott Walker. When I ran for governor, I promised to rein in spending, eliminate the deficit, and hold the line on taxes. And you know what? That's exactly what we did. We had to make some tough decisions. But thankfully, we wiped out a $3.6 billion deficit without raising taxes. And because government workers are now contributing to their health and pension benefits, like most people do, we saved the taxpayers hundreds of millions of dollars and kept thousands of teachers, firefighters, and police officers on the job. In the three years before I took office, Wisconsin lost 150,000 jobs. But now, well, employer confidence is up. And since the start of the year, Wisconsin has added thousands of new jobs. Instead of going back to the days of billion-dollar budget deficits, double-digit tax increases, and record job loss, let's keep moving Wisconsin forward. And then he's got the disclaimer that you see printed out, uh, the visual thing on there. Anyway, that's the ad. I think that this is extremely interesting. It means as we move toward the recall, and I'm still presuming that there will be a recall and that there will be an election. Walker is clearly not going to shy away from what he did. He's going to defend it. The reason I think that this is a big deal is that for a year now, We have had nothing but attacks and attacks and attacks and attacks on the Walker reforms and carrying on the collective bargaining and this, that, and the other thing. Because there wasn't really a statewide election during that period, the governor hasn't really been responding. He's responding in news conferences and interviews and so on. This is the first real chance for him to communicate to Wisconsin that what we have done has worked. It's all been from the other side so far. The other thing, and I hope you picked up on it. The last 15 seconds of the ad, he talked about what things were like before he took over. Doyle's deficits, the loss of jobs, etc. What he was saying there is, and I hope you picked up on this. Whether you agree with everything I did or not, do you really want to go back to the train wreck of the Democrats? He's saying what he's doing is working, but also, even if you don't necessarily agree with all of it, remember what we had before I took over? I am of the opinion, as you know, that the governor will win the recall election. I've been saying this for months. I believe that there will be one, and I think that they will get enough signatures. When you hire 9 zillion out-of-state people to come in and pay them to get signatures, you'll probably get enough. 
But the message he has to offer in his campaign is compelling. That ad was compelling. Secondly, or thirdly, or fourthly, or whatever this is, There are people who have wanted to be Walker to be a different type of personality. And I mean people who support him. You know, the people who love uh, uh, Chris Christie. Chris Christie of New Jersey. I wish Scott Walker was more like that. He gets back in their face and he doesn't take any bleep and blah, blah, blah. That's not who he is. The reason Chris Christie walks into those teacher union meetings and tells them to quit their crying and complaining and and talks them right down is that's his style. He is a pugnacious, combative New Jersey guy. Scott Walker's style is what you saw in that ad. Many times political consultants make grave errors with the candidates. They try to make the candidate something that they're not. Now, those of you who are from southeastern Wisconsin and have been watching Scott Walker now for 15 years... You're familiar with this. But for people from outstate, you know, Walker ran for governor (laughs) less than a year and a half ago. Think about that. Then we've had this tumultuous year. They're only, only now beginning to get a feel for his personality. Everybody is different. He's not a Tommy Thompson pumping up. Oh, we're doing great. That's Tommy's style. He's not a Chris Christie. He's a Scott Walker. And I think that the ad and the way that he's playing this plays to his strengths. He's sitting there and, again, you can't see the ad on the radio, but he's talking right into the camera, looking right at people and calmly explaining what he did and how he is proud of it. Is he out there with the same enthusiasm and combativeness as a Chris Christie? No. But he, that, that isn't his personality. Christie's personality works for him, but Walker's personality works for him. I think it is going to be very hard for the lefties to be able to persuade the people in the middle in Wisconsin to replace this governor. Every day that goes by shows that our state's finances are in better shape. That the schools haven't shut down, the public employees haven't been laid off. And people will remember the train wreck that we had before he came in. And I also believe that as time goes on, some of the people who initially didn't like Walker because of all the crap they were hearing are going to warm to this guy and his personality. Contrast this. The next point I'm going to make is just so important. Uh, I don't want to rush it. So I'm going to go to the commercial break here. Whatever you have to do, do not miss the next segment. I'm going to make a really, really important point, I think. I only say this when I think my insight's a little bit better than it normally is. The next point's just don't go anywhere. I've seen more football games the last week than I've had any week of my life. Just given how many there were that were on TV, the the schedule of work, you know, with the extra holidays and the fact that there was one that was on on New Year's Eve and <laughs> I've just seen a zillion football games. That's your important p- No, here's my important point. Candidates for public office communicate with the public through their political advertising. You just heard in the ad that I played for you a few moments ago what Scott Walker's message is going to be as we approach this recall. He's not backing away from his record at all. In fact, he came right out and he defended every. He said, you know, the other side will characterize what he's done differently, but he's, this is what we did A, B, C, D, E, and it's working. We're on the right track, and this is the result. Contrast this. With the campaign strategy of President Obama, he is encouraging protesters. 
He is distracting attention from his record. He intends to run against the Congress. Have you heard President Obama in the last year defend Obamacare or stimulus or defend his attempt to impose cap and trade or have him defend anything that has gone on in the economy in our country? He's running away from his record. He's trying to find someone to attack. So he's inventing this boogeyman of, quote, rich people. Invent, create, you know, oh, the rich of the wealthy, the number of in it for the rich of the wealthy, the rich of the wealthy, the corporate special interests. He's running around looking for all of these people to attack because he can't run on his own record because his own record is a disgrace. The reason Scott Walker will run on his record is what Walker is doing is working. The reason Obama has to run against these fake, created, invented opponents is because he can't run on his own record. If unemployment was declining, if we had a growth rate of 6%, President Obama would run on that. If the federal deficit was shrinking rather than exploding, he would run on that. He would run on his record if his record wasn't a disaster. The reason I still believe, and you know, many pundits are saying President Obama is going to be reelected. The reason I believe he's not going to be reelected is when you have, to, when you can't run on your own record, you are in trouble. Likewise, and this is part of my key point. Scott Walker has been waiting for a year for this recall. Because he's proud of his record, and this gives him the opportunity to defend it. This is stating the obvious, but I think often people miss the obvious. If you have a strong record, you want to talk about it. Which coach would rather talk about the job he did this year? McCarthy or Raheem Morris? When they hauled Raheem Morris, by the way, it, it, was he fired before the game was over? I, I said he'd be fi- the first coach fired. I, I, I think they might have fired him in the middle of the fourth quarter. Uh, Raheem, can you come into the uh, The game's still going on. Yeah, you're down 32 to nothing or whatever it was. They were down 31 to nothing with nine minutes left in the second quarter, Tampa Bay. Anyway, when Raheem was brought in for his evaluation, he probably came up and talked about anything other than what the team had done this year because what the team had done was a disaster. Barack Obama is Raheem Morris. He has nothing that he can defend and nothing that he can run on. Contrast this with Governor Walker. We've had this whining and crying from public employees because they've lost their power and because they finally have to kick in a little bit for their wonderful benefits. But the state of Wisconsin is doing swimmingly well. We've turned major quarters. We inherited a mess, and it's working. Now, again, the lefties disagree with that. But you don't see Scott Walker running away from his record at all. You see him embracing what he has done, defending it, and he's proud of it. You're not going to see an ad like that for Barack Obama. What's he going to do? Come on TV the way Walker did right there. Whoa. We spent a trillion in stimulus, didn't create any jobs, and blew up the federal budget deficit. We created nationalized health care, which is causing employers to shy away from hiring anyone. Iran's on the verge of a nuclear bomb because I haven't done anything about it. And I tried to kill every last American job by trying to pass cap and trade. Not going to run on what he did because what he's done has been a disaster. Obama would be bragging about his record if anything he had done so far had worked. 
He doesn't have one thing that's worked. Great question. What's Obama's great success as president? Killing Osama bin Laden. What's he going to do for a year? Run TV ads with pictures of, of, of bin Laden's corpse? That's it. You know, as if he did it. You call up those Navy SEALs who were involved in it and say, you know, how'd you guys get to, oh, it's because of uh, the incredible work of Barack Obama. He was, uh, we couldn't have done it without him. When they called him up and said, uh, we think we have Obama. Do we have the order to kill? I wonder how long Obama paused before saying yes. He actually probably was really quick on the trigger on that. Absolutely. Go ahead. We got to kill him. I, I, I need something, anything, anything, anything. The point of all of this is that I think it is telling that Walker is running on his record. We had an unbalanced budget when he came in. We had state government finances that were perpetually going to be on tilt because collective bargaining had rendered way too much control to a bunch of obnoxious union leaders who did not have the best interests of the state at heart. We've turned incredible corners here. And the only people who don't like it are a bunch of people who still have jobs, still have wonderful benefits, but are selfish, greedy ingrates upset that they don't get to bully taxpayers around with their rotten little unions anymore. Now, Scott Walker is not going to put it that way. Because Scott Walker's style, as you might have picked up, is not Mark Belling's style. My style would be Chris Christie's style. When I did away with collective bargaining, if I was the governor, I would have stood right, stood right up to the public and said, I'm doing it because these unions are rotten and have damaged our state. <laughs> but I'm not Scott Walker. There's a reason Scott Walker was elected governor and not me. The style and the tone is going to be true to him. The fact that our finances are in the wonderful condition they are when we have neighboring states like Illinois that are falling apart despite having raised taxes and borrowed even more money will become more and more obvious every day that goes by to all but the most obstinate and selfish union bullhead. You compare the style that Walker will use in his campaign with President, they contrast that with President Obama not wanting to run it all on his record and blaming everyone else for the mess that exists in this country. And you will see which candidate is likelier to win his election battle than the other.